Hello, this is going to be a short um, overview on how to proceed with your project report in the course Applied IoT. Um, we will do this in a peer review format. That means you, you will be uh, reading three other student uh, uh, reports and uh, you will also get feedback from three other students. Uh, as we are many in the course, it is important that you follow the instructions uh, so we can clear out all, all confusing parts as early as possible. So that's why I created this video. So let's get to it. Um, you will find uh, this document which I have behind me in our course webpage as the Project Report IT Tutorial Template. So let's start uh, how to write your tutorial. And we have chosen in this course to have your assignment, your report written in a tutorial format. And uh, why is that? That is because it is uh, it should be fun and it should be when you're writing a tutorial for someone else, you, you need to explain your choices and your reasoning behind it. And also that this is an applied course. So why not do it as a tutorial? You are uh, required to write this in the Markdown language. And you might ask, what is the Markdown language? It's a super simple way of formatting uh, just text. Uh, it makes it very easy to share code. It makes it very easy to share whatever you write. And you don't have to worry much about the format, it will look good uh, and it will most look the same. So uh, please uh, just read on, on uh, how to uh, format Markdown language. You will learn right away if even if you have never done it before. Uh, we will do this in a peer review setting. So everything that you that is done will be read by at least three other student peers. And I do say at least because I do think that uh, it will be fun if more people than that are reading it. And of course, uh, I do want you all to share whatever you make during this course as open and public as possible. So how is this peer review going to look? And now um, I'm in the Canvas site and uh, what you see here might not be the student view, but you will get the same view as soon as this is opened up. Uh, what you will be doing is when you are going to do a peer review of, of uh, uh, the paper that are assigned to you, this will be automatically and uh, random assigned. So uh, all people that hands in before the deadline will be uh, having a an, uh, random uh, free peer reviews. And what you are going to do as a peer is to check these uh, very advanced <laughs> and detailed rubrics. Uh, that means that it's more or less a game of putting down checkboxes that things are done. So uh, it's actually one point for title and name and student credentials, which might seem unnecessary, but as this is something that is very easy to miss, uh, we still have it here. So the the rubrics here are directly linked to the tutorial. And I'm going to show you here that you see that there are some checkboxes here. I'm going to talk about that. But you need to fill all the checkboxes. Those are needed to get a grade. So you can't skip the checkboxes. You need to do them all. So how do you do this? Uh, you can either um, open an account on HackMD, uh, which is the tool that I'm using uh, now when I'm showing this and the tool that you have been seen used by many of the TAs already in the course. It's a great tool for editing 
markdown documents online and sharing what you've done publicly. So this is the recommended alternative, open an account at HackMD. If you haven't done it already, you might as well choose your username as, as the student credentials, but it's up to you. Uh, and then you write the tutorial using the template found below. I'm going to come to that in just a second. And as I said, the checkboxes needs to be fulfilled. A star means the advanced level. And then don't forget to publish your tutorial uh, and upload the tutorial according to instructions on the learning platform. And actually what we're going to do on the learning platform, which is Canvas, is to upload the URL, the link to your tutorial. So it will actually be at HackMD. We will actually not upload any text to Canvas. So uh, don't forget to publish your report. Uh, if you are, uh, if you haven't done that, and uh, no one will be able to read it. And um, um, uh, that, that really is um, not what you aim to do. You need to write it in English, obviously, and don't forget that the star means advanced level. That is those of you that are aiming for a higher grade. Uh, all tutorials uh, with a higher grade than C will be published on the course homepage as a good example. So that's uh, one thing that we are going to do is that we all projects that aim that go for a higher grade, our aim is to have them published within the course. Uh, as good examples. Uh, so that is really a good thing. Um, even if you, it doesn't mean that you, that you don't, if you don't aim for a higher grade, you can still do all the stars. Uh, it's not a problem and you can do even more. Uh, this is what is required. Uh, I've gotten some questions about using GitHub. Uh, and of course you might use GitHub. This is something that uh, is not uh, at all required in the course. So the recommended alternative is to use HackMD. It's easy, it's fun, and uh, it's um, really uh, uh, maybe the most straightforward way. But you might, if you want, publish your project directly to GitHub. Uh, and in that case, you create a repository, make it public, uh, and when you initialize the repository, you check the box with add readme file. Uh, you might as well add a git ignore with Python as that's the language we're using and a license. Uh, choose an open license, a patch license is, is a pretty good one. Uh, then you write your report in the readme.md file. That means that when you go into your repository, that is what is going to be shown right away. And then you're going to show the link to your repository, which is github.com, your username slash your repository name. And this is the awesome IoT project. So if you want, uh, please use GitHub, uh, that's no problem. And just to be very clear about that is that you're going to edit the readme uh, file. Uh, if you use GitHub, uh, the recommended way, if you haven't never used it before, is to either you download the GitHub desktop app and you set up your repository, download it, and then you use the app for, for pushing the changes, uh, committing the changes to, to the repository. But you don't have to do that. It's totally possible to just go in. You can see the readme file here. And I can actually edit and directly commit changes into the project. So it's no problem to write directly in, uh, in GitHub using the web interface. You can also upload whatever you want, create new file, upload files. So you can do everything from the web page, you don't need to learn Git for doing the GitHub way. So that's uh, how you publish your report, either HackMD, that's uh, the most straightforward way, and 
uh, or you use GitHub. Uh, for uh, you might, some of you might have already found out, but you can actually link HackMD and GitHub. So uh, you can use HackMD for editing files on GitHub. But I'm sure you will figure that out if, if you're interested in, in doing that. So let's skip directly to, um, to some examples for inspiration. So last year we had a, a list of projects. That's the good examples project from last year. And you can see that you have all these projects, which you might already have seen. Uh, just you can use as an inspiration. Uh, and I've put in some other projects uh, just for inspiration. But I'm sure you already have an idea when you look at this. So let's skip directly to the template. So first. Please keep the total length of the tutorial below 25k characters. Uh, so with that, please don't extend it too much. Uh, it, it needs to be uh, possible to, to read this tutorial. And uh, even though you have a lot of peer reviews that might have a lot of time, we teachers don't have infinite amounts of time. Uh, that means that uh, we need to limit it at least to 25k characters. And that is a little bit more than last year, uh, as that was uh, actually a bit hard to follow. That doesn't mean you need to put in 25k, but see that as the maximum. And that is not including all your code. You might have a lot of code in your project, and obviously you will put that code in, in a repository somewhere uh, at, on GitHub and obviously a reference to it. So. Tutorial on how to build a temperature and humidity sensor and now we're into the tutorial. So in the first You have a title and Then this is like the introduction part if you know how to write an academic paper This shouldn't be too hard uh, You need to give a short and brief overview of what your project is about and you need to have a title you obviously need to explain who you are and your student credentials are important in this stage as we are going to grade you so we need to have that as well uh, and a short overview and also include uh, how much time it might take to do an approximation and that means that if you're going to follow this tutorial how much time do i need to follow your tutorial so see this as you're writing your project so someone else can make it. Uh, that doesn't mean that you, you might have spent a lot more time on this uh, than following your tutorial. So the objective, describe why you have chosen to build this specific device and what purpose does it serve? What do you want to do with the data and what new insights do you think it will give? So. And what needs to be done here is to, well, why you chose the project and what purpose and the insights. You need to check all these boxes. And this is not just one sentence answers I'm after here. I think this is really important that you actually give, um, give the reader and, and me and us um, the sort of a uh, uh, an understanding on, on what you're trying to do. And the answer might be everything for I'm learning and I want to have fun to, oh, I, I want to, uh, well, change the world and make the world to a better place. So everything in between those are fine, but please do explain uh, your objective and, and uh, your purpose with, with uh, your project. Uh, these things are super interesting. And it also um, uh, gives an insight on, on, um, on different uh, things you can do in IT. So material, uh, this is the bill of a material. So if I'm going to uh, replicate your project, I do need to know what you have done uh, in terms of material. So please put a, 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 a table, uh, all the sensor, where you bought them, specifications. Um, this is also a good place to have pictures. Um, so short specifications, what are you using? 
the material and you might as well put a cost uh, on a price tag on, on everything. Uh, so it's easy to follow and I can easily also replicate the project. Uh, if, if you are aiming for a high grade, uh, I mean, it's always good to explain a little bit about alternatives as well. But what you need to do is at least fill these checkboxes. Uh, and I do know that it will be the same for many of us as we are all, most of us are using the PyCom devices. Then your computer setup. How is the device programmed? Which IDE are you using? And describe all the steps from flashing the firmware, installing plugins in your favorite editor, how flashing is done. And well, the aim here is that any beginner should be able to understand and follow. And now you have a really an opportunity to sh well show which IDE you are preferring. Uh, is it Atom or VS Code? Um, and well, if, if you have strong opinions about this, please, please, uh, please share them. Uh, share how, how code is uploaded and please do this as a, an exercise of explaining. So you might have stumbled on several problems when you did this. Maybe it took a couple of tries before you figured out that, okay, I need to upload the project before it's actually run on the device and not just in the REPL in the terminal. Please explain all these things. So uh, whatever problems you have encountered that you explain to someone else that they sh sh shouldn't do the same problems. Uh, so if you needed to do something extra on your computer installation on Node.js, extra drivers, etc. Uh, please ex explain all the steps and be very specific because someone else might have exactly the same obscure Linux installation as you have. So it might actually be really interesting for someone else. So please be very specific on, on how you done and what you did to solve the problem. And then we have putting everything together. So how are is all the electronics connected? So describe the wiring uh, and it's also nice if you can show a circuit diagram. Uh, there are tools for this. I know that uh, uh, many of you have already worked with Fritzel and we have Tinkercad and there are probably many more out there which uh, I'm not aware of. But, uh, and it's fine also to, with pen and paper, draw a circuit diagram, uh, use crayons or color pens, take a picture and include that. So, and, and, Sometimes that might even be a nicer way to show something because uh, it, 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 it doesn't maybe look that, that frightening for people. But you need to show how you can, uh, how you did connect everything. Uh, so both the, uh, uh, schematics and also pictures. Uh, that, that's uh, a good place to put some picture. So, and be specific on how to connect everything. Uh, and is there anything that you want to share about resistors, current and voltage? Share it and share your experience. And also, is this only for a development setup or could this be used in production? Could it actually be used for something else? Just reflect on that uh, in your text. Uh, and I do guess that many of you are going to have something that is very much a development setup. But I would like to, for you to reflect on that and uh, just have that in the back of your mind. Uh, there is a star on electrical calculations. And what I do mean with that is that if you are aiming for a higher grade, I do want to see some electrical calculations that might be some kind of current and uh, voltage, uh, some, some kind of calculation on, on the battery uh, or the power consumption of the device, uh, you need to show some kind of calculations. And those calculations can also be hand drawn. That's fine, but they need, I need to, you need to be able to understand them and they need to be, uh, make sense. The platform. 
And this could be the IoT platform. Describe your choice of platform. Uh, so if you have tried different, which I guess many of you have, uh, provide a comparison and, and also explain why you chose the platform you did. So is your platform based on local or a cloud? Uh, is it any paid subscription or is it free? Uh, describe the different alternatives uh, also if you want to scale your idea. And, and this is also one thing that I want you to think about and reflect when you're writing the platform um, part. If you are going to scale this, that means that if you have one device now on, on your desk and you think about platform, so not, uh, not <laughs> manufacturing, but let's say you only have the platform in mind. If you want to put 1,000 or maybe 10,000 or why not 1 million devices out there, uh, would this platform or this, this choice, would, be, would that be any different if, if you were going to scale? So uh, describe the platform in terms of functionality. What kind of functionality do you have that is needed? Uh, and if you aim for the higher grade here, you need to explain and elaborate what made you to choose this platform. And for the higher grade, I do suggest that you also put in a comparison of some kind. At least you need to have some motivation on why you chose this specific platform. And what I do mean with platforms is it could be Ubidots, it could be Datacake, it could be PyBytes, and it could be that you're running a TIG stack on, your, uh, on a Raspberry Pi or in a Google Cloud environment. Uh, and 100 other different alternatives, but be very specific and think about explaining on, on the functionality and, and why. And then we come to the code. So, and what I do want you to show here during the code section is that you should uh, explain what you have done in terms of programming. And don't put too much code here. Uh, explain more the core functionalities. And, but I do think this is a really good area to put in some code snippets. And if you look at the markdown text behind here, <clears throat> you can see that if you write like this, you get a code snippet formatted as Python code. Uh, and the magic is that you write Python and then an equal sign. Um, and what is in between here is formatted as Python code. So you see like this. So uh, this section, don't put everything here. If your code is very reasonable small, let's say that you have uh, most of your functionalities somewhere else and the code on your device is reasonable small, uh, well, you might as well put all your code in here. Uh, it's not required to have a repository, repository somewhere else. Um, so we have seen many examples of, of people that are not aiming for a high grade that put in more or less all the code directly here in a code snippet. That is fine, not a problem. But try to see if you have too much code and I'm talking about like 100 of rows. <laughs> Uh, it will be uh, pretty tedious to, to read through this in, in this format. Then see this as a way of maybe showing some specific parts of your code that needs to be explained. Uh, have you done a specific function that calculates some kind of value from the sensor? Uh, or have you done some clever function that sends data to both the uh, cellular over the cellular network, the Wi-Fi network and LoRa network with certain intervals? Or is there some kind of function that, that does some logic on the device? Um, or 
have you tweaked some kind of of, of uh, basic example that has shown by the documentation and made it even better please show these uh, examples uh, no need of uh, including full sets of libraries and, and those kind of codes but please do reference everything and when you're referencing just be very specific uh, you don't have to follow a certain format like uh, the IEEE or, or Harvard or, or something like that but I, we need to understand where to find the reference so uh, where to find the material and if you have uh, used code for from someone else that's totally okay but you need to reference and you need to, to credit the people that you have used code from that is very important and then we come to the section about transmitting the data and connectivity uh, and you need to how often is the data sent uh, which wireless protocols did you use the wi-fi lora etc which transport protocols were used so mqtt webhook etc uh, if you're using already like a, a low code platform you might want to dig into a, to the documentation if it's something is unclear oh, well it's better just to ask and try to get an answer but just so that you are aware of what is happening behind the hood if you're setting up these things yourself well it should be a no-brainer to explain uh, what you've done so uh, all the different steps that are needed in getting the data to your end point so this is an important um, uh, part of of uh, of of if you uh, want a higher grade is that you really need to elaborate on the design choices uh, and what i do need uh, what i do uh, mean with with that is that you should be able to explain why you have chosen what you chose so uh, and also if you would have chosen for instance nb iot or LoRaWAN or sigfox or wi-fi instead of something else uh, how does this affect the range and the battery consumption i do think that um, you might already have the answers for this when you're at this point uh, but you need to elaborate on this if you want a high grade and then we get to the very visual part of presenting the data so this is the presentation part have you built a dashboard so and the dashboard is where you show your data uh, it can be in many ways i know that many people are using the pybytes dashboard uh, that's okay, uh, but if you do aim for a high grade, you might want to use something else. So uh, provide some visual examples on how the dashboard looks. Pictures needed. So this is important. This should be a, a, a place where you put in some pictures on how it looks when your data shows up online or on a local server. How often the data is saved in the database and uh, well explain your choice of database and obviously this is a star on that and this might be a very hard question because it is a, a hard thing to really give a good good reasoning on on exactly those choices there are so many ways of storing data in a database and there are so many databases but please try to be very specific and show what you've done and why you did it and it could be that the integration was pretty good with that and that and well it had a time series functionality and etc etc but you need to at least elaborate a little bit on the database part uh, if you have chosen a low code iot platform you might be able to get all this information just by reading up on the documentation if not just ask questions and be aware that you need to at least explain a little bit about what you you've done because saving data is something that is really a core of of, of iot 
um, and automation triggers of the data. Do you have any automation or triggers that are happening? Uh, please explain those as well. And uh, if you're doing aiming for a higher grade, uh, you um, sort of are almost required to at least have add, added some kind of complexity uh, during the path of the data. So please dig into that as well. And then finalizing the design. And this is really the conclusion, like the results of the project. So this could be could be a video presentation that you embed a uh, YouTube video. Or uh, obviously, this is where you put in a couple of pictures and give your final thoughts on how the project went. And also time to reflect what could have been done in another way or even better. So please include pictures here. And this is where you showcase the final design and the final results of your project. Um, and please don't forget that we are doing this for fun and learning. So this is also a good opportunity to be a little bit, well, try to think a little bit outside the box and try to have fun. Um, but obviously the final results of the project and pictures, that's a good thing to have included here. I hope this video made it a little bit more clear on how the uh, project IoT tutorial is going to be done.